Hey, offgoers, it's Moth. Yeah, I'm recording an intro to this podcast, too. Go figure. Uh, y'all have been asking for the old going off. Uh, I told y'all y'all weren't ready. I- I'm joking. Nobody asked for this. But uh, this week's episode is uh, pretty bare bones, pretty raw, if I uh, if I dare say. Um, we had a lot going against us <laughs> in this one. We had a lot of adversity, but I think we overcame. Uh, still, it's a pretty rough episode, I'm not going to lie. Uh, RC's microphone has this weird stuttering glitch noise to it whenever he talks and it's a little distracting and uh i'm extremely sleepy uh this is uh i just recorded the she they just like me for real podcast episode the night before and got very little sleep so i'm very tired and uh spoilers uh i even fall asleep at one point so if that sounds funny which don't, don't get me wrong, it was. It was very funny. Uh, check out the episode. I mean, you know, it's not it's, just, it's not bad. It's not a bad episode. It's just, you know, a little, a little rough around the edges. You know, it's just charm. Well, I guess all is yellow this week on the Going Out Podcast. <laughs> Eh, um, was that worth it? All is yell. Uh, but wait. Is this a, hmm. that's the name of the? Uh, uh, that's uh, that's uh, the name uh, of the album. Yeah, that's but, the name of the and it's the name of the other album. Wait, wh- what? What? Uh, what album? Oh, low. Oh. <laughs> oh. Look, my metaphor oh. is so complex. It takes six minutes to get a plot. <laughs> I could have sworn it was going to be a Blink-182 thing, but I guess we'll just have to save that. Oh, I'll, uh, or, or should you say in your bed or whatever? Yeesh. Yeesh. Oh, man. Yeah. Uh, how have you been doing? Doing all right, you know, just doing my thing, just doing my thing. Uh, just to let everybody know, you know, I'm doing that uh, beat battle contest for the dun dun dun. Oh my god, Joy, that's right. I wanted to make sure I remembered to say that because I am usually not really good at remembering things. But yeah, uh, if you hit up that Patreon, you know what I'm saying, uh, you can get all the deets on what you can do to, you know what I'm saying, get what to act like you want until, uh, I think it's March 1st is when it's going. Uh, basically, mm-hmm. you just join the Discord, throw your beat up there, and uh, in the oh my god challenge channel and then you know like if I like your beat you know what I'm saying you get the hundred dollars and you get to work on a, a beat with me in the thing you know what I'm saying uh, people who <laughs> actually the coveted thing exactly people who actually have ears for you know sound engineering and can like help me out with that shit you know what I'm saying Hell you know? yeah. look I, I'm not afraid to be a, 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 an honest humble man you know what I'm saying I come I <laughs> You know, but you know what I'm saying? I got I got some folks that I'm working with, you know what I'm saying? We're working on some new joints and just drop the royal jelly for y'all, you know what I'm saying? And there's more of that to come, you know what I'm saying? We really mix it up, making these concoctions in the lab, you know? But mm. uh, yeah, you know, when you figure out, when you mix the music theory with the cool styling shit, you know what I'm saying? There's some cool shit comes out of it. So, you know, we try to we try to mix and match out here. You know what I'm saying? So yeah, we got some shit bubbling underneath. Don't, don't even worry about it. Um, yeah, yeah, hey, yeah. Hey, RC, did you happen to watch any of uh, Music's Biggest Night, da 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 the Grammys? I absolutely did not. Uh, let oh, me, wait, that's fine. On. Look, <laughs> look, I didn't highlights? either. <laughs> okay. Um, I don't know. I didn't watch the show. It fucking Taylor swept because of course she did. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm trying to find the rap category because that's oh, relevant to Michael, us, right? Yeah. Your boy uh, won for best oh. album, Killer Mike. But yeah, your yeah. boy, and then got carted away by the Federalis like right after it's on some what? bullshit. You didn't hear oh, about that? Oh no! <laughs> like yeah, it was like some sort of like local, you know, sort of like oh you didn't pay your fines or something like that. And, and they're like, oh, 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 we got you now. Isn't that embarrassing? But it's like, man, you're just making rap look cool. Like, what are you doing? <laughs> it's about time. Yeah, he won for best rap for performance too. Yeah, yeah. Um, um, and then melodic rap performance is Lil Durk and J Cole. 
Oh, okay. Wait. Yeah, for the <laughs> all my life. That one. Yep, that's the one. Do 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 do. Uh, and then it was the same. A uh, best rap song was the same one that the the uh, Killer Mike thing. Yeah. Oh yeah, and then they said like it wasn't televised this year, and it was like what's, I believe that. What's going on? Like, what, did we not? Was there not? I could have swore I watched a VH1. Uh, uh, I love hip hop. Something that talked about how a Fresh Prince uh, his award didn't get aired <laughs> the first year. That, like, are we still on this in twenty twenty four? Like, what's going on? <laughs> I'm honestly surprised the Grammys is even, like... Like, I know people watch at this point, but, like... I don't know. Who watches these? Like, who honestly... Like... The common clay of the land. (laughs) Like, I honestly see... At this point, just do the performances. No one cares about the awards. You can still give those out as the, you know, the Academy. People will, you know... The people nominated are gonna care. But I don't think the people watching care. It's it's tradition at this point. It's tradition. Like, you go to your family's house, you know, you're chilling. Oh, the little older tube TV is on. And, hey, they're watching the live shows that still come on. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's what this is, you know? <laughs> Someone pointed out that, and again, I guess this just speaks to how antiquated the Grammys are, how people just don't give a shit. Fucking Taylor Swift straight up was on stage and announced, like, I'm, hey, I'm releasing a new album. Here's the release date. Here is the name of the album. And the audience was just like, woo. Was this, like, a thing to make up for, like, oh, we don't let her get enough, like, time? She was like, no, I got to specifically promote my album if I'm coming to this bitch. Like, let me gas up my plane to go uh, a 30-minute uh, plane drive, you know? <laughs> Is she the most popular musician in the world, arguably? Probably. Which is wild, by the way. Like, I feel like that just kind of... She well, grandfathered, she rolled into that one, you know? It's like, look, you know what I'm saying? She was the queen of the white chicks for the for the 2010s decade, and then it's like, oh shit, she conquered country. Wait, she already had that huge demographic, and then she got the pop Oh, I guess that... I guess, I guess you win the game, damn, right? <laughs> I, I, I feel like... People, I feel like she was on that, on the rise for so many years, and so many people just had the opportunity to sweep in and be like, no, it's mine. And everybody was just like, like bumping into each other, trying to catch that ball. Like, I I I think it was Todd's uh, worst of the year video where he was like, for years, it was a neck and neck race between Drake and Taylor Swift as who was going to be like the biggest artist in the world. Mm. And I'm sitting there like, Drake was really considered for a minute there. Like what? Like for, just from like a person who doesn't really give a fuck about Drake anyway. But it's like he's I'm like really he, he, he was you, that big. But you know what? This, this is the modern version of what we would be would have been dealing with in the '90s, right? Really, Celine Dion's that huge? Oh, really? Word. I mean, okay. Like you well, know, I mean, like, yeah. I mean, but <laughs> she seemed to be more everywhere. True, true, true. At the time, I guess. Mm. But like with with Drake, it's what like was I gonna say? You no. Know, Hold on, I, I had a, I had a. Oh, th- th- oh do you, do you remember the argument people were trying to make there for a minute that um, is Drake bigger now than Michael Jackson was at his peak? And it's like, are you fucking? Yeah, can we not do like, this? Like, yeah, like what no! are you doing? Like the things that Michael Jackson had to do to get to his heights and stay at his heights is like, it's nothing now. Like imagine if Michael Jackson all he had to do was just drop a single. You know what I mean? And it's like, no, I didn't even drop the music video yet. You know what I mean? Like, dropping the video back then was like, it, it clearly meant more. You know what I mean? With, with less, you know? Like, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. And it's just proportionality yeah, for stuff like that, you know? Yeah, I mean, like, especially in a, in a time where, like, streaming is the thing. Like, you just kind of look at things differently, yeah. I guess. 
And it's like, I, it feels weird to be like, man, you had to you had to go down to your local record shop, <laughs> throw down $10.99 or whatever it was. You know, the price is steadily creepy, creeping up higher. And it's just like, oh, yeah, word. That, although, you know, when you look back at the chick, wasn't it before Nielsen Scout sound scan? They was kind of a little, a little not really direct with what they was uh, reporting. They were like, yeah, uh, you can kind of punch those numbers. Yeah, 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 yeah. So yeah. honestly, it's really not until maybe the 90s where we actually get an accurate reading of like what's popular. Because I remember, like, hip hop and country blew everything out of the water, apparently. And then it yep. became this whole thing of, like, well, I guess we're catering to this shit now. <laughs> now, as far as the albums we're talking about this week, RC. Oh, yeah. Um, there was something I wanted to. Oh, TikTok. That's right. I don't really have anything about oh, uh, that. RC, I got to be honest with you. This fucking week has drained so much out of me. I'm running on fumes. But. I, I, I swear to the offgoers that I will give them all the energy I have left. Oh, that's right. We got to give them these news stories. What, what was this about? TikTok pulling all their... Uh, uh, all the, no, UMG pulled all, all of their uh, music off of TikTok. Am I wrong? Yes. All the music that UMG distributes. That's right. Uh, Johnny Maestro's hit coming soon. <laughs> we about to flood the airways or digital waves. Or the... <laughs> and so, like... A lot of really, really popular sounds just fucking disappeared, and now, like, I if I remember correctly, I think there was a time period where a lot of TikTok was, like, low effort or, like, low quality covers of songs for sounds, so it's like, I don't see why we couldn't just go back to that. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. I mean, if that's the whole point, but... It is giving uh, smaller independent artists a chance to get their sounds used. So, I mean, you know, I could see it working. Like, at first I was like, oh man, this is gonna like, this could potentially fucking kill TikTok. But, you know, I don't think it's going to. Like, TikTok just seems so fucking, like, its own. Its own. Yeah. yeah, it's its own thing. That I don't think it really relies on any one thing anymore. I mean, UM, UMG said that they account for less than 1% of, like, the profits that they make or something to that effect. So they're like, well, it's worth it to us to do this. So I try to think, like, you know, what are the, what's the power moves coming down the line where they're like, eh, it's your TikTok. We're going to get on some other apparatus that we're, you know, using our VR futuristic glasses to see what's coming ahead next. So we're ahead of this bet or some shit, you know, like... Because they're doing something. There's some sort of long game. Because it's not like they just did it like, oh, shit, uh, uh, we got to do this or else we're going to... Because like, they said it accounts for less than 1% of their profit. So that means that, like, oh, it's not worth it to them, you know? Yeah, I guess so. Um, and the only other thing that I was going to talk about, and I guess I could kind of uh, weasel it into what I was uh, dealing with this past week. You know, with with Nicki Minaj and oh, man. Uh, the Pink Friday and Pink everything. Wait, it, did if y'all drop? No, did if it, y'all weren't aware, oh. I dealt with Pink Eye for the last week. Oh. So, <laughs> oh no! I listened to the album so much, I contracted Pink Eye. So thanks a lot, Nicki. Wait, I, you, my fucking medical bill is in the mail because you listened to Pink Friday too. What happened? <laughs> That's exactly it, dude. I listened to everybody was, too yeah, much. I was just about to say you was jamming out. <laughs> uh, I was getting crunk like it was 2005, RC. I was shooting and everybody. Just, <laughs> <laughs> it was just too much. Everybody. Uh, everybody. Mm. Oh my god. And now I'm sitting over here fucking feeling guilty for myself, even, even <laughs> praising that goddamn album, seeing the fucking fool oh that Nikki has made of herself. What in the world? We gotta talk Again. about second about that i guess i guess. <laughs> uh, i just can't like nikki can't help herself she just can't constantly putting her fucking foot in her mouth constantly trying to pick a fucking battle yeah, and i like, just don't see the point it's like you're not beating the allegations of uh cavorting with pedos nikki like yeah. you didn't say anything and you can't act like we didn't hear you not say anything <laughs> It's like every fucking time this happens, it's like in this case, it's like, I know people are saying this about it. It's like, hey, you know, uh, Megan's really tall, though. Yeah. Uh, she's got big okay. feet. Okay. Did, did you know? Yeah. What? Oh, my God. 
we got to talk about what's happening today on this album. But what? what the, oh yeah. The fucking Eminem, Vincent. I'm sorry. I <laughs> care more about Eminem's music than the average person, and I could not give a shit about the Benzino disc. Look, I. <laughs> oh my good lord. I was okay, like, well, can we stop it? <laughs> oh, yeah. That's good transition. <laughs> Well, are we gonna do lyrical lemonade first? We can. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. We got it. We gotta do your your boy, Mr. Bowie, coming on through. We gotta talk about Bowie again, cause you know that's our bread and Bowie. <laughs> it's, it's low requested by low. you know who. It's Doctor Goatman coming on through again. That's Whoa. right. Blah, blah, blah. Whoa. Bowie's back again. That's not Bowie, but I'm doing it anyway. <laughs> Let's hear it for the goat man. Oh shit. Um uh low. So low, RC. Um, 1977. This And and you can tell, huh? No, you can't. <laughs> <laughs> well, the only the only reason I say that is because there's one song on here, I forget which one it is, that almost fucking sounds like Bowie attempting disco. Oh, well, like, other than that track, yeah, yeah, yeah. But, like, We're so... Like, oh, shit, okay, huh. So much of these other tracks sound like early 80s, like, John Carpenter synth, uh, you know, uh, yeah. soundtrack music, and I was like, well, this is throwing me off. <laughs> it said, it said, Bowie'd been listening to Tangerine Dream, and, yeah, that's, that's just, like, atmospheric Moog yeah, like, synth wave. Is Bowie doing ambient? Like, is this what's happening? <laughs> This is the beginning of the Berlin Trilogy, RC. What's going where, on? Where him and Iggy Pop went to Berlin to try to kick their drug habits. Because, ah. if you remember, previously on Bowie, <laughs> uh, he had that uh, uh, Young Americans album that he doesn't remember oh, making because he was doing too many drugs. All night! <laughs> all night, he set me up. Uh, he was doing cocaine. <laughs> and there was that other one we talked about that I forget which one it was, uh, where that one was kind of like a the little station sketchy. To station. station to station. Yeah, um, it was around this time. If you see interviews of Bowie, he is fucking... He, he's in a bad way. Oh, no. Uh, <laughs> very giggly, very... Very chomping the teeth. Very, oh. he's definitely high on something. Got a he's one fucking. Long pinky finger. <laughs> he is zooted out of his goddamn mind. So oh, no. he, he's gotta, he's gotta get things right. He's gotta set, he's gotta set things right. <laughs> so him and his buddy Iggy Pop are gonna go to Berlin, and they're gonna kick their drug habits. And in the meantime, mm. make some really weird shit. <laughs> <laughs> you, know, you know what's funny? Because I read that story in one of the songs, and it was just like, wow, you know, I feel like that half explains some of these tracks that totally do just sound like the backing beats for normal pop songs. But like, you know, Mr. Bowie couldn't compose himself enough to sing the uh, vocals, maybe. <laughs> you know what I mean? Because I was like, yeah. some of these, I was like, this just sounds like a normal song. Where is Bowie? <laughs> Where's Bowie? Where's Bowie? I, I will say, like, I mean, it is very strange that, yeah, the intro. Yeah. Um, What's going on? I was like, okay, uh, no, this sounds like a song, though. It, it's it, like, and here's the problem. Because there's no, there's no words on it. Because <laughs> there's no words to this song, it has a repeating Ref uh, refrain riff that you hear over and over and over again and if it was a song that had lyrics you probably wouldn't notice how repetitive it is right. but There's because more it's on. an instrumental it just sounds like a backing track yeah. and it's like um what's going on and it sets a bad <laughs> it sets a bad tone because a lot of the first half of this album feel like half-baked songs that either don't get started or like breaking glass it's so f like if if it what? feels like it ends before it even gets started it's just like oh okay i guess we're moving on to the next thing Don't okay, look cool. in the i drew something off and on it. it's like, See? okay this sounds gotcha. like freaking stewie like, look, 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 <laughs> i'm writing profanity on the wall poppycock <laughs> 
Now, I will say, I think the first two songs on the album are the weakest on the whole lot, because I think from there, um, it's Sky's the Limit, honestly. Wow. With, with the production on here, with Bowie um, at the helm, mm. with even the instrumental cuts... Okay. I think they're all great. So, uh, getting to what in the world. It, it, yes. What in the world indeed. Because I want to like this song more, but that jarring. Like, it's oh. so present in the beat where I'm just like, okay, I get it. Video games are a thing. <laughs> Look, know? in my first fucking note, absolutely love the arcade Pac Man <laughs> sounding bloops throughout the song. I knew it. Like, that, that shit is my shit. I fucking just, love that. It's just so, like, it just feels like, could this. Can this stop for just a couple of seconds? Like, no. <laughs> He's still high. He hasn't gotten out of his system what yet. Give him a minute. What in the world can I do? What in the world can I do? I'm in the mood for your love. I'm in the mood for your love. And in the background, you can hear the, co- the really coked up over. I'm in the mood for your love. <laughs> <laughs> Because he's hyper focusing, you know, on like a single celled organism, you know. <laughs> or he's trying to get to the fucking Donkey Kong kill stage. You nah, don't know. Nah, nah, nah. Oh, man. But I did like that the way his voice, like, that always hits for me. The way his timbre sounds when it blends together with the higher manic and the lower sort of chilled out vocals, you know? Mm hmm. Yeah, yeah. That I, always kicks for me. And the way it just spills over each other vocally, that's just like a, ooh, ooh, okay, we're back in it. We're back in it, you know? Yeah, this one was an incredibly catchy song. I really dug it. And same goes for uh, Sound and Vision. vision. Dun, 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 dun. Mm. This is the one where we were like, okay, all right, we're back in it. I'm bopping down the street, you know what I'm saying? We're having a good time. <laughs> dun, dun, dun. Don't you wonder sometimes about Sound and Vision? I'm like, I, not really. I mean, honestly, mm. like not even really the way he like words it. Like, it, like what he's saying in the song is just like specifically about a blue curtain. And I'm like, we're just focusing on blue. And I'm like, what? It, does Sound and Vision not encompass a little bit more than this? <laughs> you know, I was just trying to figure out, like, what is happening? Because I was like, is it like, appreciate the world around you? And it's like, and the only color you're bringing up is blue? What is this? Is this blue Dabba yeah. Like, what's happening? <laughs> <laughs> like, I just didn't get what was going on. Because I was like, don't you ever yeah. wonder about Sound and Vision? Oh, okay, that you're getting me somewhere, getting me to appreciate. And then, if I'm wrong, if I'm not wrong, like, aren't all the lyrics just like, kind of like, where is this going? What What is this supposed to be? I felt know? like that for most of the album that of the, of the songs that actually had lyrics i was like i don't know where you're going yeah. dude but like, it sounds incredible yeah he's like blue blue electric blue that's the color of my room oh. where will i live blue blue pale blind draw all day nothing to read nothing to say wait nothing to read nothing to, what happened to the, the sound in the vision shouldn't you be enjoying the sound in the vision wait <laughs> i i thought he was um interpolating that one song um oh no never mind i was getting confused with another thing i i this is a song called electric blue and i thought that's what he was doing but electric blue was totally (laughs) different and by a different band what what i got it confused with that song um jackie blue you know what i'm talking about the jackie blue i can't remember i thought he was like quoting that or interpolating that but i don't think he yeah. would have been because he said electric blue so it's not the same um it's like, I, was like, I was wrong right down waiting for the gift of sound and vision i'm like I, are you not mm-hmm. is he is he blind i don't understand what's happening yeah and, I, then, uh, and then you look at the lyrics oh he's uh, on genius so he's waiting for a moment of inspiration to come to him how how are you supposed to get that <laughs> I love that as a note for a song. It's just like, so someone writes a song, they produce it, and you're like, what is he saying here? Um, he's waiting for, uh, he, he, he wants to know what the song is going to be about. Yeah, like, that, that what, what, a, what a misdirect that is. <laughs> like, uh, what's this song about? Uh, and then the, yeah. the annotation is just, uh, Bowie doesn't know. It's like, oh, he's like, okay. He's waiting for, like, the sound to come to him and for, like, the vision of the ultimate song to come oh. to him. Yeah, ultimately. Huh. Okay. Oh. So is this, are we just, like, place holding to the next song? What is this? <laughs> yeah, it's like, I don't know where I'm, I don't know what I'm doing with this. Uh, I'll come back to this. And then, then he just doesn't. <laughs> Then we got always crashing in the same car. 
Now, mm-hmm. the, the solid track, certainly. But oh, the yeah. backstory was just like, well, that was a little what bit more lively. What was the backstory here? Uh, that was a little bit more lively than what was happening in the... <laughs> Did you see the thing where it's like, this song refers to a real-life incident in Bowie's life that occurred in the height of his cocaine addiction. Driving his Mercedes, Bowie had spotted a drug dealer on the street who he believed had ripped him off. Uh, In retaliation, Bowie, with Iggy in the car, repeatedly rammed his own car into the dealer's car, after which he, for five minutes, after which he returned to his hotel and ended up driving around in circles in the hotel's garage. Besides all this, Bowie with this course may be referring to making all of the same mistakes over and over again. Uh, but, <laughs> just like, what? Yeah, maybe. I don't uh... What? Is he rammed it? <laughs> like, imagine, for the first two minutes, y- the drug dealer's gonna be like, oh, okay, David Bowie's gonna kill me. And then, <laughs> the next... <laughs> this is how I die. Yeah, and then the next two minutes is, okay, is he just getting it out of his system? <laughs> I guess I'll just stay here. I guess I'm fine. <laughs> Like, that's insane! And then to drive off, Fender, no doubt, destroyed. (laughs) (laughs) Hanging off the car. (laughs) Just driving around in circles, you're like, I fucking hate life! (laughs) But it's like, that sounds like madness. That's not what the song sounds like. (laughs) No, no. You're not like, it still sounds good. But it's like, when they hear that story, I was like, wow, I was expecting something a little bit more, like, manic, you know? (laughs) God damn. <coughs> mm. yeah. uh, then the whole second half here well, mm. well n- n- not well, yeah. yet I guess um, yeah cause we got Be My with, Wife Be My Wife yeah with the jangly honky tonk guitar and this is the one with the disco breakdown this is the yeah the, the single song you know this is the no one does middle of the road like Bowie you know what I'm saying like this is the you know it's gonna be hitting the clubs but hey you know it still functions you know what I'm saying like mm-hmm. cause I was listening to the lyrics I'm like what is this is the most basic like I'm on the road and I'm lonely anyways be my wife <laughs> it's like oh oh that's <laughs> um, romantic be boy my wife? yeah like <laughs> be my wife maybe yeah. oh, fucking tapping his index fingers together uh, <laughs> be my wife maybe <laughs> Um. <laughs> oh man! Then we get a new career in a new town. Mm-hmm. Again, another song that totally sounds like it needs to be a like song song, but you know, yeah, I don't mind because the way that harmonica just glides on top of the beat. It, mm. Look, it's enough. <laughs> That was mm-hmm. enough for me, honestly. Or the bloopy, weird digital synths. I was like, okay, all right. You know what? Yeah, keep rocking. <laughs> you know? Hell yeah. Um, again, not much to say, but like, it's good. I mean, then moving right along, I guess, to Wars Wa Wa Warsaw. Yeah, yeah. Because, because it's talking about Warsaw, and, and they just put an A on it. For some reason, I don't know. Um, <laughs> so, I don't know, I don't know the, the, the rationale for that. Uh, okay, and this this is the point where I was like, was David Bowie originally gonna like score some like horror movie that had like a quirky edge to it or something? Like, what's going on here? Well, see, something I was gonna talk about, which I didn't realize, I didn't, I don't think I realized until we talked about Low here, was that. He had this movie that came out, the uh, the man who fell to Earth, that was just like the uh-huh. sci-fi thing. And I don't know if any of these songs are on the soundtrack or not, but what I was going to talk about was that both album covers to mm-hmm. Station to Station and Low are just still frames from the movie. Wait, and it's like that's what we're doing now. What? That's that's how we're making album covers. Like they look great. They look like really good album covers, but then you find out, oh, it's just a still from the movie. Like, what? (laughs) (laughs) Can you do that? (laughs) Yeah, like, I I don't know if I've ever seen anybody else do that before. Like, you you honestly can't tell. Yeah, like, the load certainly looks good, but, like, the the other one, I'm kind of like, oh, yeah, I can see that being from a movie, but it still kind of looks kind of, like, iconic. Anything can be an album cover, I guess. I wish you didn't tell me that. Yeah. I would have just like, oh, this is good, good composition here. It looks good. Like, oh, this is just a still frame from the movie. Like, oh, I remember trying to watch the movie back in the day too, and not liking it. I might <laughs> like it more now, but I think I was just kind of bored. What, what was it then. about? What what pulled He's your an hour? alien, and he he falls to Earth, and uh, it's basically just like looking at how 
life in the city on Earth, like, basically kills this alien. Like, mm. how, like, an alien life form just, like, isn't uh. equipped to deal with Earth. Like, Earth is mm. just too much. Like, the drugs, uh. the life is too much. But my music made a movie like this sound like it was going to be much cooler. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's like, oh, no. It's just a bummer. That's a, that sucks. But, uh, so, yeah, I, I wrote that down. I was like, is this 80s movie synth way before 80s movie synth music? Like, what's going on? Right. <laughs> like, how is this motherfucker still ahead? <laughs> like, you know. Well, um, I, I will say, at least at this time, him being inspired by Tangerine Dream it does, mm, it does for one show that he is not innovating here. He oh, is he, seeing Bowie be the inspired sideways. is actually oh, very interesting to me. Oh. It reminds me a bit of, um, and you can kind of see this being a thing, like like, like a, a theme with Bowie, oh, because yeah. you're like they're, like oh he he's in Berlin now. Oh he's inspired by right, right. by the Moog now. He wants to do this instrumental uh, stuff. Okay. Oh he's new in New York. Oh he's inspired by the by the queer art scene. So he does hunky dory with That's like right. the song to Andy Warhol like. He is very impressionable yeah. and will write about where he is. Like, David, it, it, like, uh, who's depending da- on where he is, dictates how the album is going to sound. Yeah, w- with David Byrne as well. It's like that he brings that, mm. you know, white boy funk to it where it's like, it's just that little jagged edge in it in a way where it's like bending shit in a cool way. Now, he's not really doing that here. Like, the one song I feel like we get the most of that is... Uh, maybe what in the world? Like, I feel like that's the most we do the off-kilter sort of fun winding feel. But, like, for the most part, yeah, he's in a different energy. Like, it, this was really yeah. throwing me off. <laughs> and with Warsaw, with the, the light flutes that ride, you know, riding underneath the placid synths and then the random Icelandic singer or was a Polish singer that comes in halfway through. I was like, mm. whoa, what the fuck? <laughs> like, this is, this is really fucking cool. Like, I actually really enjoyed this one. You know, usually I was expecting, like, all right, these instrumentals are going to be, like, mostly just kind of, you know, meh. But, like, I was like, I was actually enjoying the personality and color of most of them, honestly. Hell um, yeah, yeah. Like I don't really have too many, too much in the way of notes on the instrumentals, but like they're distinct and they're different. Like each one had a different vibe to it. Like um, a quote from the Genius Annotation on Warsawa, uh, the track's bleak, oppressive mood. Uh, he explained was his attempt to capture the feeling he got from the city itself. The wordless vocal refrain was based upon a recording of a Balkan boys choir he yeah. had recently obtained. Like, because you click on it, and I was like, is this translate to anything? And I was like, we got nothing. Uh, this is just based on something he'd heard. And I was like, oh. Uh, it oh, it's okay, not sound fucking cool. fresh. <laughs> uh, Art Decade, for me, the star of Art Decade was this weird digital gurgling that was happening in the background. Like, it just sounded like a weird, like, like a cauldron was just boiling no. over. This, I was this like, one, yeah, this I was one. Like, how I, did you do that? This one was the one I liked the least, though. It, it, this one felt too much like a quirky late '80s, early '90s movie synth, like a mm. Drop Dead Fred movie or something like that. I was like, <laughs> you know okay. what I mean? With the bubbling, yeah, yeah. I remember feeling that and being like, what is happening? <laughs> Yeah, like, like I felt like I needed a visual accompaniment. Like, yeah. what, like, what are you scoring here? I need to see what's supposed to be happening here, because you're definitely painting a picture, but I don't know what it yeah, is. I feel like I'm watching something with Tim Burton, black and white, jagged squares, you know what I mean? Like, something's yeah. going on there. <laughs> uh, Weeping Wall had that xylophone. Yeah. And uh, the striking synths that were kind of unassuming on their own, like it was kind of like a very innocent sound. But then there was just this loud squealing or weeping synth that was just in the background. Wait, was that was that that? It sounded like a really distorted as fuck guitar. That whoa, whoa. yeah, I was like, what is that? Yeah. And then Bowie starts wailing over it too. I was yeah. like, oh my god! I was like, what? Is Holy this? shit! <laughs> what is this? Uh, yeah, uh, I wrote this out of like the late seventies thriller. Like, all right, we moved back to the seventies a little bit, a little bit, but you know. <laughs> and then just to end it with uh, Subterraneans, oh which just has such a chill vibe. Oof. But then, 
RC, we almost went a whole album without it, but here comes the saxophone oh, solo. Just right where it needs to mm. be. The fucking Tim Curry Home Alone 2 <laughs> smile <laughs> that just sl- like g- slowly came on my face. I'm just like, oh shit, it's here. It's back. <laughs> Guess who's back? Yeah. Oh shit. <laughs> Guess who's back? Talking about Benzito again. <laughs> Who fucking Bro, cares? Not right. Uh, oh my god. Look at that in a second. <laughs> but overall, what would you rate this album? I gave it a four. I give it a four as well. Like, hey. you know, there was a part of me that was going like, ah, instrumentals, come on, nothing's that. But then when I had that second listen, I was like, no, man, there's this real character going on in these tracks. Like, I feel it, you know? So, oh, for sure. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I got to give it up to it. Like, it, it goes in such a different direction. You know, I'm so used to Bowie being, you know, pop music. And, and you know, to some capacity, it being like, Hey, we're dealing in some pop shit, you know. This, you know what I mean. But this was just so different. Yeah. I was like, oh, oh, we're in a different energy. No longer David Bowie, the rock star. David Bowie, the artiste. The artiste. <laughs> yes, exactly. The artur. And from there, we made a startling discovery la- uh, last time. At the end of the show, we were talking. We were going through the queue of upcoming album requests and uh there's no rap on it there's like no fucking rap albums in it we exhausted all of them <laughs> come on you gotta um, send us more send us more going off dot com i mean uh, <laughs> going off dot com <laughs> come, secure come it me. now come <laughs> dot com slash go slash off, motherfuckers <laughs> You gotta get those requests in. The The queue is lower than it's been in That's a long, right, long time. So definitely take them in. You know, we're, we're gonna have a little bit of incentive because your boy does want to talk about that hip, hippity hoppity, you know? <laughs> That's, That's my yeah, genre, you I, feel me? <laughs> as I look at it, we've got Benny the Butcher, we got one... Oh, that's and right. Limp Biscuit. We got two. <laughs> that's it. And Salt and Pepper. Okay, you like okay, Salt and Pepper from 97? Okay, we got three. Yeah. That's not bad. But the thing is, they're like kind of a little bit lower in the queue. So we're like, okay. Yeah. We got to throw it to maybe, the new shit. <laughs> maybe we'll supplement it a little bit. We haven't talked about a new album in a <laughs> while. <laughs> Give me some new shit. <laughs> Give me some new shit. <laughs> and we were looking at the albums that were coming out and RSC said, Muse, I got some fresh lemonade, freshly squeezed. I poured it in a cup. Can't get enough. And I was like, what the hell are you talking about? And he said, it's lyrical lemonade. All is yellow. That's right. And I said, what? I still don't know what that is. <laughs> and I was still confused for quite a while until I found out because I just don't have my finger on the pulse, RC, of hip hop pop culture as it is in this current day that apparently Lyrical Lemonade is like the fucking tastemakers. Oh, the so to speak. Jour. Yeah, that's right. And they were on there, like, as you predicted. They were on their DJ Khaled shit. Of, That's right. Let's just pull all the names out of our Rolodex, but all look, the popular people we know. Now, wasn't this person just like a blogger or something to that effect? Like, they just like posted. It was like a YouTube channel that, yeah. that debuted music videos. Like, I watched, uh, I learned this, like, I watched Needle Drops video on the album because, again, I was very surprised he even reviewed it because I was like, I don't know what this is, so I didn't expect him to. Um, but then he started talking about it and he was like, oh, yeah, like, the Jack Harlow What's Poppin' video debuted like, oh, on their right. Lemonade. And it was like, oh, shit, okay. So, yeah, they basically are just like, they're the ones who are bringing us um, tomorrow's stars today. I mean, and it, yeah, in a way. And it's interesting that this album, um, the, the choice was, let's not, de- let, let's not display too many of our up and coming people let's let's show off a couple maybe but mainly yeah let's just flex our muscle i was about to say show how many huge names we know yeah <laughs> i was like oh the guys with uh you know less than uh 500k on that channel yeah they're not getting as much shine 
as uh, you know what I'm saying. We got to get a little Dirk and Chief Keith back up from this piece. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, um, um, dude, I, I I gotta tell you, this album's a fucking mess. <laughs> it's, it's so weird because God damn, like I enjoy the like the adventurousness of the production in a way that I'm like, oh, we're going mm. for like acoustic. We're trying to really lean into the like emo, you know, put like the emo rock sound with the hip hop on top of it. You know what I'm saying? We're really trying to lean to the emo soundcloud, you know. And I'm like, mm. I like some of it, some of the times, but other of the times, it feels like. Yeah, this feels like the new fluffier, certainly, like nicer sounding version, but the new version of Middle of the Road in a way on some of these tracks, you know what I mean? Where it's just like, ah, this is just kind of like, I guess it's nice that it's different and slightly more layered, you know? Like I said, the production is nice, but then the rappers are just kind of like meandering around. It's like, I feel like they're, you know, I'm looking at this heavenly sight and the rappers are like got these fake, you remember when Insane Cloud Posse did that, uh, this is Deep Cut, uh, did that promo for one of their albums and they're like floating around with the fake wigs around the songs and they're just like, I don't really know what I wanted to say, so I've just got to say it. So like, that is- Oh no, I can't say I've seen that. <laughs> Like, that just feels like so many of these songs are just like, oh, this is really nice texture. And okay, did this rapper know what he was, was he, were they, were they together on this or was this a, we mailed this one in? You know what I mean? Like, I, I got a deep reference to, uh, to describe how this album felt to me in the, in the early nineties, it's, it's, it's a, uh, it's a wrestling reference in the early nineties, yeah. uh, WCW put together this thing called the battle bowl where yeah. it was a tag team tournament. And their twist on this was we got, like, lottery tumblers with all, like, the names. We got the heel locker room, and we got the face locker room. And what we're going to do is we're going to make tag teams on the fly of a, ta- of a heel <sighs> and a face together. And we're going to see if they can coexist and they could work as a team oh. and beat the other team. And sometimes it was people that were feuding at that time. And then other times it was just random people. That's what a lot of these songs felt like. Yeah. And it's just like, why are these people here together? What, what What's is, their connection? You know, what is Sheck West, Ski Mask, the sc- Slump God, and J.I.D. have in common? Well, someone thought they needed to be on a track together for track one of this album. Like, now, you know? I, I will say that ma- that made sense a little bit for me just because Slee Mask and Jid, haven't they like worked together a good bit in the past? Like, haven't we talked uh, about them? I can't like, remember. I feel like they collaborate a bit. But I don't know Sheck about Sheck West, Sheck West is, Yeah, that's what just throws me off. Going from Sheck West to Slee Mask, and I was like, okay. And then like to Jid, I was like, but Jid is, like, I feel like this is not the same energy, you know? Like... Yeah. It was the, the the funniest thing to me was the it was Sheck West singing "Fly Away, Fly Away," bitch. and in the background, so <laughs> bitch, <laughs> bitch, and it's like, why are you yelling? Yeah. What's happening? We're really putting that fly you know, away, uh, bitch, fly guitar away. with the rap. This is what how it sounds. This is what we do. <laughs> I was just like, all right, uh, I, I, I guess I didn't expect cohesive, a, a cohesive album, any co, uh, co- yeah, yeah, I can't talk. Uh. I didn't expect any, uh, like one, I didn't expect consistency on this album or cohesiveness. Um, I just saw a bunch of names and figured, okay, this is just going to be fucking, uh, a buffet of all these right. popular uh, names. Was Sheck West, was Sheck West a name that blew up on Lyrical? Because that, that, that feel, that's feeling like something. Because this story we all was like, why is Sheck West? Like, I haven't heard that name in a while. Like, why is he on this track? I can't say I even know who that is. Uh, he's the one who does, I got hoes oh. calling your new phone. Oh, Okay. Yeah, yeah, I'm trying to remember. Was he on? I can't I can't see. I can't see anything that specifically. Uh, this has got to be. That feels like one of those names. Uh, but yeah, uh, uh, going back to it, where, where the hell is that album? Um, but like, and that's the thing. Like, it's not even, that's, uh, what, oh boy, Ski Mask is that bad. Like, I like most of his verse, actually. But when he gets to the end where he rhymes like essentially saw it with blow it with purpose with saw it, that was kind of like a, mm, oh. okay. <laughs> you know? And I, then, I figure you were here for the 
for like the nerdy references. He's uh, oh, sure. you a clone, you a me seek, <laughs> you you a house n word. <laughs> I'm a road runner. <laughs> me, me, me. Uh, yeah, yeah. Think well, I work at Best Buy with the squad. Uh, how I get geeked, yeah. fell out, fell out the boat. How a motherfucking knee deep. Yeah. Yeah, I was like, okay, yeah, this, this right. rules. I'm here for this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it wasn't too bad. It just like ended a little like weak. And then Jid's verse felt like it should have been more. Am I wrong? Like. I don't know. And they were I still thought it was a pretty solid verse, yeah, but I don't solid. think it compared. Yeah, like to anything else I remember hearing from. Like, I guess there's just a certain point. Sometimes where you'll just like repeat phrases and it just feels like a, am I supposed to be impressed? But like, you know, I don't give a fuck about school. I'm at school. I don't give a fuck about dough. I got dough. We got our bros. I go. You know, it was just like, oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> like, you know, to do so many repeated words, like you got flows and mowing, mowing, you know, it was just like a, okay but there's no like usually the re- reason why that's clever is because you're changing the phrase the word slightly to like flowing glowing glowing flow or like mm. a word that's very similar to flow you know what i mean like yeah yeah it just felt like a, oh there was nothing okay that was just that word all right, all right. <laughs> you know um but yeah i don't know it, it was just like a okay opening you know salvo and then guitar in our room well maybe res- want the first track again so <laughs> so oh, shit. like oh oh man alright here we go because yeah. the really leaning into the we're doing the you know bedroom pop sound guys but mixing with the rap you know <laughs> the next Lil Dirk oh, is in one. his room with his guitar I'm sure he is yeah dude from here like we started out fairly strong with Fly Away it is such a neck nose break <laughs> nosedive after this. Oh my god. Yeah, guitar in my room, Lil Dirk and Kid Cudi. Uh, oh, I, I thought Dirk I thought Dirk sounded annoying, but I really hated Cudi on it. Like his his voice anyway. <laughs> Here um, I go with the ominous humming again. <laughs> I liked where Dirk was going, but Cudi's verse just like took all the fucking wind out of the sails. Yeah. Like that's the problem when you get people who just like aren't the same style. Right, it's like, the energy's not why? the same. Yeah, it clashes so bad. They need to get the chemistry right. Like '90s albums would do this too. You know, they get different rappers together, but they figure out how it make the, they figure out how to make them work in a way where it's not awkward. What was a who is your boy from Cypress Hill? He put a whole bunch of like rappers together, and I remember that for the most part feeling coherent. Uh, you know who I'm talking yeah. about? Uh, uh, DJ Muggs. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. I remember that album feeling like relatively coherent. But yeah, this just feels like, I mean, okay. Like, yeah, I guess. You know what I mean? Uh, and then he just he just wasn't say, like uh, Kid Cudi strikes me as someone who should be saying something deeper, but it's just like but then you hear him and nah, not really, baby. I'm just mm. y- you know it's just like eh, whatever. Maybe at one point he made really you know really uh, 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 fan grabbing music. I remember like in some of the early cuts, yeah. you know what I'm saying, day and night. I remember like I'm in my pursuit of happiness, but, but tell me what you know about night terrors. Nothing. No one's ever had nightmares before me. <laughs> you know. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but you know it's that kid energy. You know what I mean, young. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, uh, what, what was after that word? Say your grace, Chief Keef. A little better than the last track. I Noble. felt. Oh yeah, yeah. But I don't remember being too mad at it. It was like, oh, yeah, he was just kind of like the first four lines, just Bottega jeans on him, Bottega jeans on him, Bottega jeans on him. Where yet? It's like, oh, I don't care about jeans. I don't. Have... Why is the word starting like this? <laughs> what didn't make sense to me was this part where he goes, oh, Hold on. Well, <laughs> oh, I uh, keep it. Just. Muse can't hide their rivetedness of the music. <laughs> I, I am so fucking beat. I got so little sleep last night. I'm running on fumes, but we're. We're, we're gonna make it. Um, where he goes. Uh, suck me like you need me. I'm a bless you like a deacon. Till the N word die, I'm gonna keep. I'm. I ain't gonna lie. That shit ain't even. Yeah. What? Catch her while she leaking. 
she gonna hose them up all she, she gonna hose up all of that semen yeah okay then he goes worry about your streaming all that reach and leave you bleeding yeah it's like wait we were just talking about Hey, you're gonna be leaking, and I'm gonna hose it down with the semen. <laughs> yeah. Hey, worry about your stream and all that reach and leave you bleeding. Like, whoa. Yeah. What the fuck? How did we get here? <laughs> and I looked it up. I, I, again, I am not up on this shit at all. Yachty had a small beef with a with a kick streamer, brood, drop him off. I don't. I don't know, bro. That he per that that he knew personally. Bruce stated, uh, Bruce started, quote, reaching and accusing his streamer friends of all sorts of things and talking behind their back. Later on Yachty's podcast, I didn't even know he had a podcast, he and Kaisenat talked about Bruce and how he's hot-headed and Yachty said that he still loves Bruce, um, oh, he still loves Bruce like he's his little bro. Bruce... Again, this is a cook. This is a genius annotation. Bruce, the dumbass that he is, g- got insulted. Acted like Yachty called him "little bro" in an insulting way, and then went on to say that y- that Yachty copied his fits. What? What does this have to do with bleeding? Well, Yachty is saying, you know, if you don't shut your fucking mouth on stream oh. talking about me, I'm going to have you bleeding. Oh, all that reaching. Oh, I thought it was like you're reaching so much. You're like, you're going to stretch your skin until it like, you know, bleeds. Till you break till your skin breaks. What the fuck? Well, I mean, he was talking about hose up all the semen. I thought he was talking about like banging the chicks. And I was like, oh, my God. <laughs> yeah, the, oh, yeah, that's true. <laughs> Yeah, like, no, he's talking about a fucking streamer that no one knows. Yeah, and <laughs> what the hell? Big Sean is on the song, apparently. I don't know. What? What was he? Where? Is that, is that on the hook? Oh. I, I don't know where. Usually they say no. that the sort of, like, uh, the emphasis thing when, it, you know what I'm saying? They have the normal text and then the sort of, like, oh. uh, but yeah. I don't see where what he's saying anything is. Wasn't there one song where it basically was just like sampling someone and they were like, oh yeah, he's totally on the song. Like, don't. What the fuck is this? The Flash, goddamn, you know what I'm saying? (laughs) Oh yeah, exactly. (laughs) Using Nicolas Cage's fucking face and shit. I stood in a room and I was supposed to be watching a planet get destroyed or something. (laughs) Then I'm flying all over the place. And I'm hanging with Big Sean, apparently. (laughs) And then, okay, what's after that one? After that, we oh, get this my uh, life. This my life <laughs> uh, with Lil Tecca, Lil Lil Skis, and the Kid Leroy. I just wrote trash versions all around. Goddamn! I mean, they do sound like they fit together. <laughs> yeah, that's. The, 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 we really do got a three amigos <laughs> here. You got three musketeers of suck. Of average with these folks. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, this was bad. Uh, not very good. Then Friday night, not much better. Uh, Tizo touchdown. Wait, first Juicy night. J. First night. What did I say? You said fri- Friday night. You have to just say- <laughs> it's Friday night. I'm so tired, <laughs> RC. Give me a break. First night, Tizo what? touchdown, Juicy so, J, Cochise, Lil B, and Denzel Curry. You know, this is where we start cooking with some fucking gas. This is where we start. No, we don't. Yeah, <laughs> no, no, don't we're... fucking lie to the people. <laughs> That's where I know. I, I'm throwing my, my hat in the ring for this one. Because this, it, it's just, you know what it was? I was just ho- so happy a song was just committing to a bit of something, you know? Okay. Because, like, the previous checks were just like, this is just a bunch of people together, and hopefully it'll be a hit. This is just a bunch of people, and maybe it'll be a hit. And then Tizo touchdown. The the R&B singer who just seems like they're just like upending the game with their weirdness. I'm like, yeah, the, the, my voice is gonna be all up in the mix. I'm singing as weird as possible. I don't know. They didn't give me any direction. I guess I'm just gonna start singing. Come and let me teach you how to sing. Oh, you didn't know that I could sing. I don't know what this song is about, but I'm just kind of going. Oh, did you know that I could sing? The whole world's no. I'm singing about me, me. Somebody help me sick about me. I don't know what this has to do with anything, but anyway, Juicy J, let a nigga hit it on the first day. <laughs> let a nigga hit it on the first day. Dude, the intro was, was like, such a fucking, like, so 
<laughs> Never mind that shit. <laughs> right. And now something completely different. <laughs> yeah. What the hell was all that? Like, I just couldn't help but be like, you know what? Personality. Something happened. Like with the way it just slid into that minor mode of the. It's like, what in the hell? <laughs> and then, uh, what was it? Uh, the Cochise. That uh, that was all right, but when Denzel Curry hits that shit, that that's what makes it a song. Where you're like, oh okay, this is about you know what I'm saying, uh, having a good time, hating it. Yeah, he's saying like, uh, wait, what does he say? No, no, yeah, he's just fucking flowing and swagging out. What does he say? He says, he says, oh yeah, that's what he says. Uh, I'll be a thief in the night. I'll steal anything. Bust some pussy. <laughs> Gotta keep it oh, yeah. Cause you know this game ain't built for rookies. <laughs> all this shit's gonna overbook me. All the, uh, uh, I know where the O's at. Look at all these broke, lame niggas asking where the O's at. Wait, was he with the one who said like, lame, where my hug at? <laughs> oh, I'm not sure. <laughs> that might've been another track. But, uh, yeah, yeah. But, and then, you know what it was? It was kind of like, all right, yeah, that's what it was, because this was all the same song. <laughs> this song was an experience. You have Tizo Touchdown, the insanity in the beginning, then you have the, the basic bitch hook of, let her nigga hit it on the first night. You know, then you have Cochise. I don't remember it being like a bad verse, you know, because he was saying like the- I thought it, I thought it was bad. I thought it was really bad. You know, with the money coming fluent, it influenced her. I can run into it. Uh, she's a nigga, can you view it? I'm like, all right, that's, that's something, you know what I mean? <laughs> Like, it doesn't ultimately leave any, it lead to anything because I'm looking at it. There's one line, I might beat it, Billy Jean. Yeah, you know, mm. yeah, you know, yeah, there's nothing. All right. <laughs> he, I was, wrote down. he was on the beat nice. You know what I mean? He was on the beat nice. That, yeah, that's what I remembered. My notes were Cochise sucks shit. Wow. <laughs> then I said Denzel with a subpar verse. Subpar for him. Ooh, yeah. I, I, like, I've heard better from him, so I was a little disappointed. Yeah. Then. Juicy J with his shit chorus. Ah, then, then, out of nowhere, <laughs> rest in peace, Miggy, two times. And it's like totally out of place. Like, what? Now? <laughs> and then fucking Lil B with his you bullshit know, outro. I like, this sucks, was. man. I that's what it was. It was just such a throwing together of so many things that I was just like, <laughs> all right. The, the cool guys that have been cool for the last four tracks are trying to like branch out and be a little, you know, different. And it's like, oh, okay. <laughs> like what I kind of, I kind of can't help but like it a little bit. It's just so reaching and going for the, like just the little, like when I saw Lil B's name, my face stoned up like <laughs> two hours. I was like, oh, Lil B was some lame. But then just the energy where it was just like, you know, one night stands all right. But love is the greatest. <laughs> I was like, is this, is this not a verse? Is this what's happening? <laughs> Having sex on the first night is cool, but we could wait. There's so much love in this world. Take your time, man. Don't worry about it. But you can fuck too if you want. You don't feel like you got to. You don't got to. It's like, oh, all right. Mm-hmm. Like, what? Like, what? Okay. Like, what is this the hook? I'm about to let a nigga hit it on the first night immediately followed by. I'm like, you don't, you don't have to, though. Don't, hey, don't let that guy push you. <laughs> yeah, it's like the guy that pulls you aside afterwards. Like, hey, that guy, fuck that guy. Don't let's do a word he says. Fucking little B slips Juicy J of 50. Hey, thanks for being the, you know what I'm saying, the jerk guy. Uh, you know? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Oh, man. But yeah, that was yeah. one of those so dumb it wrapped back around to being like, okay. okay. <laughs> but I totally get it. Because uh, that was like, mm-hmm. it's a, you know what it was? It was just the, the, the influence. I influenced her. That, the, it blinded me. I, I remember. Because <laughs> I was like, oh, that sounds kind of cool. But then I remember being like, wait, does he say anything else? Yeah, yeah not really. <laughs> then this fucking could have been good um, special and it's Lotto, <laughs> Sway Lee, and Amine. And it just felt like they squandered and dropped the ball on everybody. They, like, they it was don't just fumble sound after like fumble. they're working together. It, it, no, not at all. Yeah. Um, but I did like Lotto's verse well enough, you know? Uh, I like how, like, she actually illustrated, like, a story about, like, oh, you know... You, you suck. I ain't gonna fuck with you anymore. Like, a bitch just need to think. My old fling and link. I had to tell him bye, bye, bye. We ain't never been in sync. You know? All right. You know? Uh, yeah, that's pretty good. I did yeah. like that. Um, but yeah. And then, oh boy, with the fish. 
this one. This is. Fuck. I came around on this one. God, I don't see how, man. It's so God damn. Dumb. It's like it's just, uh, it, you know. At first, I was like, "What the what the hell is going on?" But then, when I listened to it the second time, where you just think about like, man, he's not trying to be the best. He's not trying to you know bother anybody. He's just going through the mountains. I'll be starting to catch me at the mountaintop. See me at the ocean. See me underwater with the fish. <laughs> like he's just, <laughs> he's just like, I'm just, I'm just, I see him bobbing in the water. Just, I, I, try, yeah. to, I try to trouble nobody. <laughs> now, the verses are bad. Yeah, especially the second one. What the heck was going on with the Ben, Tim, 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 Taz, Young, moving down the aisle oh, from Peter Trump. I feel like Pete. Uh, huh? Who is Six Dogs? Who is that guy? <laughs> Mm. Yeah, I couldn't tell you. Is that one of the, uh, you know, uh, you know what I'm saying? One of the guys that don't get as much love on the on the YouTube page there. I don't know. Let me look up Six Dogs. Will I be able to find Six Dogs on YouTube? Or will I just find videos about Six? He has a song called Butt Cheeks. Ah, oh, okay. Moving right along. <laughs> yeah. Uh... But yeah, that, that was one of those, all right, this is stupid, but the hook is kind of like making it enough to be like, oh, yeah, I can see being like, I'm just walking down the street trying to enjoy my day. <laughs> then we get Doomsday, uh, the, uh, oh my God. the PG-13 role model. Uh, but, you know, it's not the worst. It's just, it definitely feels like, little bro role model like role mo- the, the little bro that looks up to the role model made their song you know what i'm trying to say uh, i mean i guess it's just a flip of a sample or a flip of a beat this was when i first looked up lyrical lemonade they had the, this video the music video uh say or like pinned to their channel and this is clear in a way the best song on the album for me oh yes definitely it's, <laughs> uh corday and juice world and it's it has a fun it has a fun uh memorable beat because they just flipped a beat yeah. already new um like i like but, how they get gutter with the lyrics you know especially as the track goes on but there's like a couple parts where it's like the over rhyming thing where it's just like what did that actually mean like i found the reef accordion like one person's like oh yeah i'm stashing weed in the back of a classroom in the lab freezer Ooh, ain't i so bad and then i found the reaver accordion stashed in the back of the lab so i'm in class smoking gas slapping the class preacher like i was like oh pfft, okay are we in yeah. sunday school what's happening like <laughs> you know like what? This feels like you know a, a line written by like a rapper you know who grew up in the '80s where maybe like you know Catholic you know church schools are still like maybe a normal thing. You know what I mean? Like uh, that might be a thing. Yeah, potentially, sure. Yeah, you know, it just feels like like trying to like oh I slapped the nun. Like I don't know. Have you really been around a nun? Like you know, <laughs> like when was the last time you've really seen a nun, guys? <laughs> The, yeah, they fucking sampled the best song on the album with the two worst songs on the album, in my opinion, uh, with the fish and uh, Doomsday Part Two. Um, okay, so I like this is embarrassing. I liked, and yes, that's what makes like pisses me off because as uh, as I'm saying this, I look at my notes. I liked the Doomsday Part One more than Part Two because yeah. I was like, at least they were getting gutter sure. lyrically, you know, especially at the end where he's like, carry him, then bury him, barbarian. Beef with anybody, even if you're vegetarian. My flow on Ebola, your flow just need Claritin. You know, like, I like that. Or when it's like, you niggas so fake, wash your face in my showcase, fresher than Colgate, make them hoes wait, I hold wait. Like, oh, okay, okay, okay. Like, they was getting a little gutter with it. Then with Eminem doing these, like, barely rhyme things that are really obvious, you know, like, I'd rather talk about the verse of forever. You know, like, it just feels like a, uh, 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 is this good? Uh, you know what I mean? And then... I'm already not a fan of old Eminem, meaning, oh. like, old age Eminem. Uh, because he just goes with this awkward flow that you can't even follow. Let me get but, my cane so I gain on my road gain on the toll lane. <laughs> uh, but this fucking... Uh, the way I... I rolled and just gave up all hope for the song. I have this whole part quoted. He goes, Now I got a riddle. One condition. You mustn't laugh. Okay. 
What's the opposite of Benzino? A giraffe. Go at his neck. How the fuck is that? How can I go at something he doesn't have? That's been established. I, I'm pretty sure we all figured that out. Are so are so short. Wait, what's he saying? Arms so short. Um, yeah, yeah. Um, arms so short he can't even touch his hands while they're about to. While they're above his head doing jumping jacks. Sorry, I don't mean to upset you, Ben, when I talk about all that debt you in. I can't believe we're still talking I, about Benzino. Halfway through what? his verse, I'm like, I can't believe he's still talking about Benzino. <laughs> it's like, yeah, what? I don't... <laughs> it's so fucking embarrassing at this point. Please get a different topic. Like, Fuck. Stop talking about these irrelevant ass motherfuckers. You are making them more relevant by talking them. Like I, like I said, I am the Eminem fan, and I don't give a damn. When I saw that video on Twitter, you know, you know, when Twitter tries to make things go viral, you know, with the fucking, uh, you, you want to get angry about this? Look, Eminem's got beef with Benzino. Do you care about that? And I'm like, no, I don't care. Like when I heard that punchline, oh, 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 oh I got a riddle. What conditions you mustn't laugh? What's the opposite of a Benzino? It's a giraffe. Cause. You remember what Benzino looks like, right? You, you remember? And I'm like, no, I don't know. You no. Know, <laughs> the only reason I had any idea was because when we talked about the D12 album, I looked up a video that was like recommended on Genius. That was that was like, oh, it was an interview with Benzino talking about whether or not the source was like intentionally giving Eminem bad reviews or whatever because they didn't like him or something. And I think by the end of the video, it was just like, no proof was given, and it's just Eminem with another excuse to rant for a bit. Uh, but yeah, uh, like, uh, you know, just dis it. Oh, oh, your arms are short. You can't touch your hands when you're doing jumping jacks. Uh, don't, don't rhyme there. Um, you know, <laughs> you know and, and it's just so in service of what? Like, dissing this guy, like, who gives a shit? Like I said, and then and mentioning Coyle Ray, I was like, oh, oh, right. I guess it, like, wow, you had to remind me that he's related to Coyle Ray. Like, <laughs> I don't think I would have known that. And, and it's so building up, like, this uh, go out his neck. How the fuck is that? How can I go after something he does that? It's like, y yes, we got it. You know what I mean? And then the fucking, t uh, you're two men at the Red Roof Inn. I'm like, this I don't want to know about what is it. You know what I mean? Like, stop telling me. Stop saying it. And then, and then you, you see it fucking coming a mile away because he just goes, it brings me no joy to say. You know, I hate to spoil the day. Like, oh, yeah, I wonder who he's going to mention. You know what I mean? Like, mm. but yeah, it's just why have the verse dedicated to this? And then the way he ends it is like, it's aftermath that I ride for it till I die. And I was like, oh, was there like a joke that was supposed to? No. Okay. Wait, wait. That was it. Um. Then I don't have anything written down for Fallout with the which is a uh, Gus Dapperton, Lil Boat again, and mm. Joey Badass. I liked that. Like, I mean, uh, the hook felt a little too present relative to what else was happening. You know what I'm mm -hmm. saying in the verses? But I like that Joey Badass had like a like just a singing you know, sort of emotional verse. I was like, oh, wait, I was it. Cause I was thinking like, oh, is that another singer on the track? I was like, oh, that was Joey. Huh, that threw me off. And so I really liked that bit. But then when he came back at the end, I was like, why did we need that part? Like, it just felt like a tacked on, wait, I gotta show up like a rap though. And I was like, all right, I, I didn't need that. that was, that's okay, you know? Um, then we get my favorite track on the album, Equilibrium. Hey, hey, hey. Uh, Mike and Mary, Master Bitch, I'm fancier than Squilly. I'm fucking body shot. We ain't even done this equilibrium. I'm just chilling with my billies, waiting till the billies come. Like, look, he is the low key motherfucker that I just fucking dig right now. Your boy, Baby Tron. That's my guy. <laughs> That's my man, 100 grand. How are you feeling, uh, Muse? Yeah. No, no love. <laughs> Wait, what happened? Oh, could you not hear me? Um, no. What what did you say? Were we both talking and then we couldn't hear each other? Um, can I be honest with you? Yeah. I fell asleep. <laughs> I caught you. <laughs> Uh, uh, yeah, word. Uh, how, how, how'd I do? What? Hmm? What? 
dock this muse a day's pay for napping on the job. <laughs> Look, RC, I'm trying. I really am. This is not here for this album. I... <laughs> he, she, she heard these sweet lullabies of the guitar, and she was just like. <laughs> I heard Lil Tracy, and I fell the fuck asleep. Said, Hello, Hello there. I just dozed up. <laughs> Mm, I, I fluffed my pillow to that song. Okay, oh no, sorry. I don't know how long I was out. What were you asking me? Look, Equilibrium, that was my favorite track from the album. Just because... I think it's okay. Yeah. It's definitely not my favorite. B- Baby Tron, you know, he's just flowing. You know, just that just that opening line. Just like, my Camary master bitch, I'm fancier than Squillium. Fuck a body shot, we aiming at his Equilibrium. Like. Okay, now here's the thing. I liked that. I liked that line. Mm-hmm. Why they repeated it again later? I was like, I don't know if it's that good. Yeah, <laughs> like that yeah. we heard it twice. You know. Yeah. No. Um. That's probably a solid uh, second favorite. Well, actually, actually. Huh. Oh, you're 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 gonna be pissed Ooh, at me for this one. I think I, I think I know what's about to happen because I just looked down myself. <laughs> I forgot. I. I I might say Uh-oh. that goddamn Jack Harlow and Dave yeah. <laughs> might have the second best song on the goddamn oh, album. Oh, wait. No, now that I look back, no, that's the first favorite. No, I forget. Really? Yeah, it was this track. Then, let me see. Yeah, the last track, then Doomsday, then Equilibrium. Yeah, that that, that was how I'd rate these tracks. Wow, no, I yeah. was so here for Doomsday all fucking day. You see how much awake I am now? <laughs> where I'm just completely rolling with He's, it like I didn't just fall yeah. asleep for a couple fucking minutes probably. <laughs> Yo, my friend is eating M&M's. He's, he's got caramel ice cream. Yeah, and I'm like, is this... Like, I think that's what just the opening was just a little... It was just like, I, was this supposed to be like, the, oh man, it's just a little random. <laughs> I was like, but this isn't like that funny. Just get to the verse, you know? Yeah, <laughs> you're right. Um, oh, but we got to talk real quick about the hello there. Oh, 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 oh no, I conked out again immediately. My fucking head just hit my goddamn laptop. Okay. Oh my God. So this I, I only have two notes for this song, right? Because I heard the, I heard the music. And I, I thought I recognized it. I was like... This fake-ass Tim Burton uh, soundtrack wannabe fucking... Yeah, I was like, is this, is this like a Miss You beat? Yeah. What's going on here? And as soon as he goes, hello there, I was like, oh, no. So my only <laughs> notes are the first note, oh, no! <laughs> and then my second note is, holy shit, no, laugh my ass off, stop, stop, stop! <laughs> Because I couldn't, there was so many opportunities. Like, after they did the first verse, I was like, okay. <laughs> They're now, like, yeah, right, that, that was the like, intro. Yeah. That was the intro. Now someone's just going to come in, and they're going to start rapping like normal. And then it's fucking just, it kicks right in with the goddamn, how the fuck does that second verse start? Why, <laughs> why am I flaking Where on it now? If I die before you die. No, before that, oh, oh. The, the fucking, um, where are you? I was like, no, we're still doing this. We're doing the whole goddamn song. No fucking way. And then, yeah, after that verse, I was like, oh, okay, where are you? And I'm so sorry stop. for telling you. I'm sorry all the time. Like, we're, we're oh. really building on it. <laughs> you know? Yo, okay. And then when we got to the fucking chorus, and it was ba- and it was like a flipped chorus, I was like, we're doing the whole goddamn and song, aren't like we? Barely. God. Damn it. And it's slower, so it's even more like, here yeah. we go. Oh. And the thing is, the, the, what they're saying, if I die before you die, maybe I'll be the ghost inside your bed. Like, ah, voice inside your head goes, and you're essentially saying the same sentiment, man. Like, you know, the, I'll be the, 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 you know, the voice that you're, that's still there when I'm not there. Like, yeah, it's the exact same sentiment, you know? This is fucking Boston and Ghostbusters all over again. Invisible man sleeping in your bed. Like, <laughs> that's all this is. And then... I got a ghost in my bed. When the verse verse starts and it's like, 
this is way too late and we're trying to do like some sort of like here's a drum beat that is now on the beat for this now and it's like oh okay and what is it i'm cra- i'm crashing out about your love why they hate to see us up all black lamb truck but you know you doved up you know you doved up yeah what does that mean that was a very present in black craze artwork and aesthetic such as the cover of thug angel thanks genius um. all right but anyway <laughs> yeah whatever you say sure but yeah just nothing <sighs> nothing i'm nothing of a song no absolutely not didn't need to be here didn't need to be as long as it was uh it's embarrassing sorry quite frankly mm. and i did it to two. I, I don't like to cr- I don't like to say that things are cringy or that I cringe or whatever. But this was this was really bad. Just the like, slow I, roll of it is just like, oh my god, please just get this. And over. this is supposed to be like a showcase of like all these talented this was people. This like, single, yeah. At no point did <laughs> anyone say, "What the fuck is this? Get this the hell off the album. This is embarrassing." I remember watching the music video where it's like, oh, it's like a yellow curtain. And they all walk out of the curtain and they what? like it looks like a Super Mario uh, Galaxy level, but nothing really oh. happens except for like a kind of swing just kind of being there. And then they go like, all right, we show you the swing. OK, we're going to go back inside the yellow thing. And like them walking oh. into the yellow, like, you know, uh, uh, borders for going backstage, like it takes up like more time than fucking the interesting, slightly interesting oh. space visual. It's just like, what the hell's going on? Do you guys not have the budget to show what else you wanted to show? Like... That's weird as hell. What the fuck? Yeah. I think maybe at one point there's a bed, but it was just like, it just so doesn't do, it just so never starts. And then it's already over before it feels like it's getting started. And then, uh, oh yeah. Then Hummingbird, which I, my only note is, damn, they really hit us with the best song on the album Mm -hmm. and then just said, fuck them after that. Uh, Like, like, they got what they need. They got what they came for, in, in my opinion, like like Doomsday. And then after that, aside from Equilibrium, they were just like, nah, they're good. We already got their money. Fuck them. Yeah. Why would we put any effort into this shit anymore? Because this song, yeah, I got no notes for it's it. A, it was just like, all right. I, I like the comfy vibes of the beat. You know what I'm saying? I like that. But other than that, it was just like, yeah, this, you know even though there haven't been that many R&B, R&B songs, I feel like I've already heard this before, you know? Like, yeah. Right, yeah. Um, and yeah, with Tizo touched out at the end, what does he say? The early bird gets the worm. I eat both. I don't, I don't know what that means. <laughs> what? I, you eat birds and worms? Yeah. He eats worms. <laughs> I guess he's so early. He's eating the, he's eating the bird that got there too. <laughs> oh, you know what? Actually... That works. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm fine with that. Throw some love, throw some love. Suddenly, he's not just eating worms to make his friends laugh. Yeah, exactly. Uh, but you know, it, like it, T- Tizo's, like you know what I'm saying. He represents a little bit, but he's like on the third verse, so it feels a little too, too little, too late. You know. Hmm. Uh, let me see. Oh yeah, actually, I remember not. Yeah. Because it goes like, I can build a bridge through the leaves, winter's coming. I'm flying through the trees and the breeze, wings humming. I don't have a single regret since I left the nest. Like, I like it when it's like, oh, it, it, you know what? Tizo touchdown feels like the genuine, in the same way that it felt like SZA, like, mixing, like, rap style truly with R&B stylings. Like, in a way that doesn't feel like Chris Brown, try hard, awkward. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, exactly. So that, that, that's what I enjoy about him. And I, I'm, I keep my eye on that, on that gig, you know? Um, <laughs> then we got Stop Giving Me Advice. And can I tell you, mm-hmm. when I saw Dave's name, my brain thought it was Lil Dicky. So I thought... Me too! <laughs> oh, I was like, oh no, please. <laughs> we can't. No, no, please. Because at first I was like, hmm, hmm, Jack Harlow kind of spent, wait a minute, hold up. Jack Harlow, okay, he came with that uh, half of that green tinted album energy. Okay, okay. You know what I mean? He's giving us a little bit of something. And then I saw Dave and I was like, oh, fuck, no. And then I heard the accent and I was like, what the fuck? Why is little Dickie doing a, oh. <laughs> oh, it's that thing. That psycho drama, okay. Dave. How you doing? 
Look, can I tell you, I was all the way here for day. We, he took us to fucking South London real quick, just real quick, real quick stop on the off the metro. <laughs> you know, <laughs> an extended yep. stay to be sure. But it was like, whoa, <laughs> you know. Uh, oh, but when Jack Harlow ends the verse where, where he's like, have you ever had your hero sit, sit you down and give you advice? Have you ever spoken to something into existence or do you just talk about other people's lives? <laughs> it's like, mm. stop giving me advice. Like, that, that's, that's how you do that shit when you do that shit. <laughs> the fucking swagger. Yeah. Oh, please. I don't need to hear your, your musings, you know? <laughs> but, man, when Dave comes in, I almost forgot about Jackie Boy. <laughs> Cause he, yeah, it's like, oh, he's here too. <laughs> Well, look, he was like, death row, you niggas down to your last mill. You have a, uh, you have a signed a seven-figure deal and a bird's quill. Can't even call it breakfast because it wasn't even your first meal. Forgotten birthdays, mm. uh, but remember your verse still. Oh, uh, you have a fucking supermodel and it sounded like skeletons dancing. <laughs> yeah, what the fuck is that? <laughs> what in the world? <laughs> Just the imagery. The bizarre <laughs> imagery. He likes those uh, 90s skinny supermodels, huh? <laughs> sure, yeah. I, 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 I see it. I get it. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and then, but then later on, it's kind of like the, you know, these are the, 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 the spoils of, you know, what we had to go through. It's like, you feel numb to the praise and the memories passing. You ever robbed someone and it sound like asking, didn't have no food, so you disguise it as fasting. Like, ooh, ooh oh, damn. Mm-hmm. But then the way, the way he ends the verse made me mad. He was like, your communication is oh, no. bad, but you're rich, so she's giving you chances. And pretty women giving you dances. I come with a pole, but you're more like Olivia than Francis. You ever been? And then he cuts off, and I'm like, what? What's your, what's your time? Oh, what's your, yeah. I was, I was only halfway done. I was only halfway done. <laughs> you haven't been? And I'm like, what? What'd you start? And it's like, stop giving me advice. Like, start the verse again. What are you doing? <laughs> no, it's just, at that point, it's just like, you fucking get it. <laughs> hey, you get the idea? <laughs> <laughs> I could go all day. Oh, my God. Yeah, man. It was like, it's like when you watch a bird and a bird is just like, they kind of glide for a while and then they flap their wings again to like get that height again. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They, they fucking do that at the beginning with fly away to get that momentum. They're going for a bit and they kind of lose speed. Lose speed. Okay, they flap again at Doomsday. Okay, they lose a little bit. Then they flap again at Equilibrium and they flug a little bit and then they flap again at the end like yeah. there's four good songs on this whole album yeah. man out of 11 songs at 14 yeah, songs 14 songs i i gave it a generous two and a half uh i give it a i give it a three <laughs> i can't okay. i can't believe i'm being nice with this new but i i I, you know, enjoyed certain moments. I remember, yeah, just, you know what it was? Yeah, the dumb moments just won me over. Oh, that's true. Yeah, I forgot. You liked a couple songs that were absolute duds. Yeah, and like, I can't even argue with you. But it was just like, but it was just so doing something as opposed to the other songs which were just like, here is just a standard pop rap song, you know? Now you're right, though. I, I get that. Like, sometimes that's enough. It's just like, I just need... The personality is enough to get me through this. It fucking stands out among the track list. <laughs> you know? Mm. For real. Oh. Well, hey, folks. Um, that was a first, uh, I think, falling asleep during an episode. But hey, you know what? Um, you know, anything can happen on going That's off. That's right. And it usually does. <laughs> so... Uh, if, you, if there's an album that you want to hear us talk about in a future episode... Like we talked about the David Bowie album earlier, just head on over to our Kofi. We we mentioned it before, but we're gonna mention it again. It is ko fi dot com slash going off. That's G O I N O F F. Uh, request something rap related. Yeah, probably. Going our way, you know? <laughs> Maybe we got, we, you know. We're full of all these other genres, you know. I, I'm not going to tell yeah, you what to request. Uh, That's a simple... So we just don't stop a... <laughs> it's a simple suggestion that, you know, maybe rap for once. <laughs> Hit us with those Wu-Tang Clan albums that uh, no one ever gets to. Hit us with a Capitano. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. Get get a... Uh, get a copy of the... 
Get a copy of the Wu Tang album that only that Martin Scarelli got. That's and right. We'll review that. Yeah, go for it for the podcast. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but oh, but, uh, yeah. Th- mm, huh? I'll go ahead and promote your thing. Yeah. Oh, uh, but that's going off. Um, let's see. We got all our links in the description. Our link trees. The uh, uh, all of rap, all the rap critics' links. All of my links are individual Twitters. Kofi's, Patreons, YouTube's. That's right. Uh, you name it, we got it just about. And right now, until uh, March 1st, I've got the Oh My God beat battle going on. I told you about that. Oh, yeah, and then mm-hmm. I didn't want to forget. Uh, the Oh My God uh, review, I will be doing it if we are able to get to 1K by the end of March 30th. So get with it, act like you Hell want yeah. it. You know what I'm saying? I'm trying, I'm trying to see if we can do it. You know, Let, let's make it happen. Fuck it. I ain't afraid. I ain't afraid of no self-criticism. You know what I'm saying? And not even on no bullshit. No not even on no that. bullshit. Oh, I'm just gonna be nice and just lazy. No, no, no. I'm, I'm down to go in. You know what I'm saying? Let's talk about the flaws. Let's talk about it. <laughs> you know? So Dude, let's fucking talk about I it. I ain't afraid. You know what I'm saying? Like, I, like I, genuinely, I enjoy talking about music. And I'm like, okay, I'll talk about mine. I'll be a fucking pretentious up my own ass person who talks about his own shit. You know, if you want me to. <laughs> oh, yeah. But, you know, I, 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 I would. You know, like to not be that person. I don't like being a pretentious asshole, but you know, I am a pretentious asshole. If you want, so if you want to let me be me, you know, you can hit that uh, Patreon, Patreon.com slash I will, will be pretentious for money. That exactly. is, pay me to be a dick. I'll be a dick. Mm-hmm. I'll fuck a day. But yeah. well, that about wraps it up, folks. Thank you so much for spending your time with us tonight. And you know what? I'm going to apologize for falling asleep because that, that feels shitty, but. <laughs> Man, but, but, but between the pink eye you know what? and everything, and just being just really sick for the past no, no, week. You know what, ladies and gentlemen, she could have edited that out. She could have said, no, everything was perfect and everything was absolutely fine. No, but she didn't do that. It, you want to know why? Because <laughs> we give it to you raw. <laughs> we leave it all on the table. <laughs> Luckily, RSC was, was, very, was a very good sport about that and thought it was very funny. <laughs> so I'm leaving it in because it was very funny. But if RSC was mad about it, y'all never would have heard about that. <laughs> I can't believe you. <laughs> All the hours I put in slaving over a hot computer. <laughs> Make sure if I RC would have... If RC would have sidebarred me and fucking, no. you know, like real talk, fucking come to Jesus moment, I would have just been like, dude, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, oh. I would have started crying. Oh, I was like, I'm sorry, dude. I can so <laughs> just lose some time, man. <laughs> Life is hard. <laughs> I got like. Three and three hours and change sleep last night. I'm just so sleepy. Okay, so I don't, I don't know if you want to include this, but there was one podcast I was listening to once where like someone got kicked off the podcast. And you know when you're just like listening through a podcast and you just kind of have a good oh time. Oh my god! And then like one episode starts. And I can't remember which one it was, but it was just like this guy has not been paying attention to the movies. We, you know, you guys have been complaining and letting us know that this guy like barely pays attention. Oh, we like calling him out, da, 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 and we told him we've you know, told him before. And it was just like a, oh my god! And then it's like now back to the show. It was like such a weird thing being like oh okay uh i know why that guy's not gonna be here anymore <laughs> and look you could have done that to me very early on in the no. show and i just wouldn't <laughs> listen to albums all the way through you could just be like okay views this is fucking this is no. stupid get, get out of here <laughs> well look look the way i feel about it is at least uh you know at the end of the day it's like if the album's not pulling you in enough you know what that's their job that's their job you know <laughs> that's true to entertain, yeah. entertain us, it's entertainer. Entertainment. <laughs> God damn, that's entertainment. Mm-hmm. Anyway, uh, that's the show, and we're gonna stop it now. All right. So yeah. until next time, I'm Muse, and I'm the Ram Critic, and look at the part, look how it plays for mm-hmm. you, and what a thing to do, mm-hmm. and it was all yellow. <laughs> Mm. Ah.